Well, Doc, what's so fascinating about this is that you were able to have this effect. PTSD affects so many different people in so many different ways, but then to not have to be on any anti-anxiety medications, no benzodiazepines, right. no SSRIs, that's the part of this that's so fascinating is that you're able to maintain this without any additional medication. Because it wasn't like masking my symptoms anymore. I was actually addressing and solving the problem so it wouldn't miss misfiling that my brain was doing the stories that I had told myself explaining it as a, like a five-year-old uh, that this meant God hated me or something like that. In psychotherapy, you can discover those things, and I did, but I didn't know how to fix it mm. to stop that, that constant, like almost body memories and flashbacks and night terrors. And people all over the world suffer from this. They don't have any well, hope. And, and that's why I'm glad we're talking about this. Dr. Holland, before we let you go, do you see the point in time where this is going to be an accepted practice, or is this gonna be a, a fight to get it more, adopted more, I, I guess, throughout the world of, of psychotherapy and psychiatry? Well, one thing going on right now is that we have a lot of veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder who are really at risk for suicide, homicide, arson, domestic violence. Um, we've got almost, basically a, a, every hour a veteran is committing suicide right now. So it really would be a, a great help for the veterans if we could get MDMA-assisted psychotherapy into the VA helping these veterans because we have got hundreds of thousands of veterans who are on disability taking a lot of different psychiatric meds and not really getting the help that they need. Well, Dr. Holland, thank you so much for being with us. And Thanks. I'd be remiss if I, I didn't at least take this moment to make it very clear where we all stand on the street drugs like Ecstasy Molly. A very sad day last year when a young woman from the University of Virginia tried it once. Her parents were on this stage, had to bury their daughter so recreational drug use and recreational use of this drug is not something that we are even comparing this to. In fact, you, your very self, Rachel, have gone out and, and preached to groups saying, look, this is not a fun drug. This can cause death. You went to, to Burning Man, did you not? And I did, and I urged users to stop using this Med well, assuming that it is, because there's some, like they said, you don't even know if it is MDMA. But I, I asked them, I said, until we get this therapy available for people who are, will die without it, this life-saving therapy, please stop using it recreationally. We can't have um, any more people get into situations that's going to delay the science. Uh, Giving of, it a know, bad rap. Exactly. And that's the challenge here is how do we push the envelope with a drug that in the wrong hands can be dangerous, but in the right hands can be, life can be a cure, life-changing. So, Rachel, thank you. Thanks. We're so blessed thank to have you. you. Hey, I'm Dr. Travis Stork. Press here to subscribe to the Doctor's YouTube channel and press here to help reduce tension. Hey, I'm Dr. Travis Stork. Press here to subscribe to the Doctor's YouTube channel and press here to help reduce tension.